thank you all for coming. Uh, my name is Abhisak Chuya here. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, how we decide the uh, public cloud uh, at scale and uh, what have we learned from the, pa from the past and why we change it to the uh, fabric networking here. What's the benefits of all this thing? Um, also, I'd like to uh, mention a little bit about my co-authors here, uh, Mr. Chan Sin Chin Prasad and also Mr. Jirapat Supapinan here. Um, uh, both of them couldn't make it because of the visa problem here, so um, I'm here alone. But uh, they're with me on the call here. If you have any questions, uh, I'm sure I can translate it and then uh, uh, answer you that, okay? So uh, it is, is the last one of the, uh, of the conference. So I think uh, we just have to, uh, we don't have to rush or anything. So we're gonna go with uh, the flow here. Okay. Uh, and, and uh, first of all, before we, we tell you what's the problem, I think we're gonna give you some uh, agenda first. Uh, today's agenda is we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, what Nipah Cloud is doing in the past, uh, what kind of uh, public cloud we provide, what kind of service, and then uh, when, when we talk about the old public cloud, uh, when we scale what, what happened, and then uh, the bottleneck with the underlay and overlay network. Uh, and, and why we switch to uh, tungsten fabric, uh, what's the benefits and what the features behind it. And then and, and later on, we're gonna show you uh, with that features, we can do a multi uh, availability, availability zones, uh, the whole complete structure, architecture of uh, OpenStack and tungsten, uh, how uh, we implement it. Okay, first, a little bit uh, about the Nipah Cloud. We uh, established in 1996 in Thailand, and uh, we have a headquarter there. We have about 135 people here. We have two availability sites, uh, 24 by seven, uh, NOC. And, uh, you know, we, we have our mission. We want to provide limitless uh, cloud computing with this open stack and uh, uh, storage uh, services here as well. Uh, we do have a lot of uh, certification with ISO standard, like 27001. We have uh, 20,000, uh, 20, uh, 1 uh, ISO standard, as well as uh, ISO 29110 as well. Uh, we, we partner with uh, Juniper Network uh, today. Uh, also, I'd like to give the credit to Juniper as well in, in, in implementing this uh, tungsten fabric together here, okay. Um, the, oop, okay, how come somehow we can get this one? Okay, uh, before we move on, just want to mention a little bit that we start providing the public cloud with the OpenStack uh, in 2016 and uh, we use Okada, that's a version. And uh, then in 2019, we launched the private car. We have a customer like a banking and uh, telco. Um, and then 2022, which is this year, we just launched a new uh, cluster. Uh, we call it uh, Nipah Cloud Space here. And it's with all this fabric networking uh, and the version we use it, Victoria, okay. And then, uh, the old, the old public cloud uh, that we implement with Okada is still there, okay? We still provide the service. And uh, we did upgrade it until the end of the Okada version, okay? Okay, um, when, when we experience uh, with the old public cloud, when we try to scale it, uh, some problem happened. Uh, and, and uh, we, did, we didn't really go up to like 100 racks yet, but uh, after 10 racks, 20 racks, you're gonna see some uh, problem with, with that. How, how are you gonna scale compute node uh, over the racks? And then uh, including the SEP storage, uh, we've encountered with the uh, underlay network bottlenecks and the performance of the overlay network as well, okay? So these, these are the big question mark for us that if we want to scale, these are the problem we need to solve. And how are we gonna solve that, okay? And then uh, multi-ASAT is, is also something that I think we all have to consider because if you don't implement um, 
this uh, tungsten fabric with the fabric networking, we cannot implement a multi-ASAT. And that means we're gonna call, if you're gonna have another cluster at different data center here, we have to call it a region. But the region is supposed to be outside the country. It shouldn't be within uh, Thailand, right? Within Thailand, it should be like an ASAT availability zone. That's, that's the way we look at it here, okay? Okay. Um, so when, when we start out, this is the, uh, oops. Okay, this is the uh, layout, oops, okay. This is the layout of, of our uh, network and also the racks, okay. Here, here's the, uh, you know, each rack. that uh, we, we have issues with, like uh, when you're scaling to 100 rack, the east-west traffic, uh, you're gonna encounter, in, encounter with the large broadcast domain. Uh, you gotta handling a lot of broadcast, uh, unicast, multicast, uh, which all these things, when you handle all these things, domain announcement, uh, if some nodes go down, okay, you gotta reinstall it and then uh, restart it, and then you have to re-announce all this information to all these racks, all these switch throughout. So it, it becomes burdensome for for the uh, um, uh, the process here, and then it it reduce the performance, and and uh, it it's in increased latency. When we start out, we want to do like SLA 99.99. But with all this kind of problem, we cannot launch S, uh, SLA 99.99. I think the best we can do is 99.9 uh, because of this problem occur. And uh, another thing, is that another issue is the centralized routing. Because as, as you can see that everything has to go to this. Right? So that, that's a big problem for us. You, when you uh, scale, you gotta add this aggregator, okay? Uh, you have to add two more, and everybody has to connect to the bottom uh, of the rack here. Uh, all the rack has to co be connect on that one, okay? <laughs> so uh, when you have some problem, you have to restart, the conversion takes so long, and the, uh, for example, like a, a spinning tree, uh, there's some problem with the looping, and then you have to restart it, and that's how we, uh, encounter with this form and I think we have to look for the solution uh, how we're gonna uh, deal with that. Also the network protocol for this kind of uh, uh, setting is that we have the R which is the when you add, add a new node okay R is a big problem for that we have to re-announce that. Uh, we use the virtual switch system here or we call it MLAT here as well. Uh, this is the technology using that one. And another problem is that the whole cluster here, you have a limitation of uh, VLAN 4096. Okay, that's another limitation if you want to scale here. Okay, uh, so in order to scale over 100 racks here, uh, I think what, what you have to, uh, I'm saying about within the same availability zones here, so we need to, First, we need to transform the uh, architecture, network architecture, and uh, change it to CLOS, CLOS topology, which is the one that you have to, uh, 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 you have to understand it's, it's about spy and leave, and you can scale it one by one, but in the previous one here, when you scale it at this point, you have to scale it two, two at a time. Okay. So when you scale two, but can't go more than eight. That's a limitation. So, uh, because everything is centralized, it's hard to um, uh, expand after that. So, if, if you're gonna, I, I think it's good if, if you're gonna do like a private cloud, I think that's probably okay. But if you're gonna do it for public cloud, uh, you need to look further beyond that, what kind of, uh, uh, network architecture you're gonna use. 
And uh, we go with the sea loss topology, spine leap, we can talk a, bit, a little bit about it. And uh, we change the uh, communication between overlay and underlay, we switch it to BGP, E, VPN, or VXLAN. Okay, this is a protocol for the IP public fabric here. And uh, instead of a single gateway, we use the anycast gateway here, okay? Uh, or you can call it distributed gateway. Um, this is, give us the way to uh, balance the load with the EC, MP, equal cost, multi-path, okay? Uh, this will give us a high availability as well, uh, which is uh, what we are looking for. Uh, our goal is we want to achieve uh, enterprise public car. We want to achieve SLA 99.99929, not just one nine. Okay. So for the sea loss technology, spine leave. Why? Why you need that? Well, because it allows you to scale. Okay. It allows you to scale. Um, one by one, you don't have to scale two, three at a time, you just one. And uh, you, don't, you don't have any problem that uh, IMLAC uh, presented to you. Um, the, the, it, it's become the link between uh, spine and leaf, it's become active, active. It's not just the active, passive. One, you use one, you don't use the other one, okay? So no blocking while spanning to you. you, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, it allows you to have multi-tenancy, okay? So you, you support uh, multi-tenancy with the virtual routing function here. That's, that's uh, the beauty of it, uh, that you get, you get more uh, tenancy in there. And like I mentioned before, it's uh, distributed great gateway or, or any cast gateway uh, over any rack in the same ASAT here, okay? Um, so we can, we can scale both spy and leave with this CLOS technology, yeah, okay. Um, and, uh, okay, now, this is a new one. This is an uh, update. As you can see that, uh, I, I switch a little bit here. Before that, L2 is right here, right? Now, underlay, we have the L3 layer, the VGP, and you can see that this is a spy, and this is a leak, right here, is and the connection wise, you can see that one, two, three, it's a different way of connecting. You don't have to rely on just this all. You can just expand one here, one here. And if anyone you want to go out to the internet, you can hook it up, hook it up to the uh, layer three VGP above. Okay. So for the north south, it's a new one. We all have a VGP. VGP, overlay, underlay, and connect to outside is also VGP. Okay. We, we all realize that when we go out in the internet to talk to everybody else, we use VGP. And then that's the beauty now, the whole thing become VGP here. Okay. Okay, just give you comparison right here. You can see that this is really a big difference here. This is layer three, layer three. This is still layer two, but it's layer two within each one. Okay. And uh, uh, the strength of it is that it provides you with the flexibility of uh, of, of the. Uh, standard support multi-vendor. That means there's no vendor lock-in here. That's, that's a good thing about it. And again, it's an active, active multi-home across link, so no blocking without spanning tree. It's uh, equal cost, multi-path. And it's very simplified technology uh, and configuration here in terms of operation-wise. So um, the, the, when you have some pros, but there's some cons, in, in this thing too, that uh, it's uh, perceived as tungsten fabric is very complex. I think that's the hard part about it. We spent like two years trying to understand it and uh, work on it. And the other thing is that uh, we have a uh, FCOE fiber channel over internet and uh, fiber channel uh, internet protocol. This thing is not supported for this kind of uh, 
uh, network technology. So, and, and again, when you can scale, you're gonna have more device to manage. Okay, so that, that's another big problem with that. But every time, every time you restart a new node, it only within this map. Okay, you don't have to announce, okay, hey, I'm a new guy here. This one no, this one kick, just let everybody know here. But it's within this map. But if you, in here, if you miss, Okay. Uh, remaining issues with the neutron overlay network here. Okay. Um, again, in, in the past, with the old public cloud, we use a neutron, right? Uh, we don't really have a tungsten from it. Uh, we use only OpenStack, SEP storage, and then neutron here. But uh, by, by using that, uh, we still have a problem that uh, it's not support at the NACL. That's also something else that we want to do. We want to be able to uh, do access uh, it's the list here, okay. And uh, it, it's not support L3 routing for floating IP. Uh, when you use the old way, uh, you use open switch, right? And there's an issue with that. When some port fail, or, uh, or else what you have to do, what you have to do, port fails happen a lot, and what you do is restart it. And when you restart it, you, you get the problem with the large domain uh, announcement which is gonna take longer. It, when you restart it, it won't take like one minute, two minutes, it takes five minutes, it takes 10 minutes. And if that's the case, how, how are you gonna uh, sustain the uh, SLA 99.9? The customer will complain, oh gee, you know, start it, restart again, and it's, I gotta wait. You know, those are the problem that you can encounter. Uh, something that we have experienced a lot because uh, this is about the operation issues here, okay? Maybe it works fine at the beginning, you know, in the first year it worked fine, but as we move along, as we expand it, uh, people will ask, see, why, what happened? Why it, it uh, restart again? And, and we can't answer, answer that. And that has become a big issue for us, okay? Um, also, there's uh, many agents, it's a neutron server overload. And it also uh, have a big problem with the Labbit MQ. The old public cloud that we have, uh, Rapid MQ, uh, worked so hard, so many traffic is overloaded on, that, on them. Sometimes, you know, uh, we, we have to slow down, we have to wait. It's, it's waiting too long. Rapid MQ is just trying to uh, set up the uh, queue to everybody, but it's been overloaded, and so it slowed down the whole thing here. So that, that's uh, the big problem here. Uh, the last one here is that not support integration physical, with physical uh, router here, okay? You cannot plug in directly with the physical router, and that's another problem that we, uh, we we're facing, and we would like to change all this, okay? So that's why we bring tungsten fabric in here, okay? So it uh, integrates seamlessly, okay, with OpenStack, okay? And, and um, if, if you understand the history a little bit of the, uh, the guy who um, work on this thing, and uh, I, I talked to Mark Collier and uh, Jonathan Bryce, and they recognized that, uh, who is this guy, and I don't even know him, uh, but he moved around, uh, to a, to a, uh, I think he started off with uh, one company, I think it's Cisco or Juniper, and then they, they rewrite this thing, and then they move around, and then they end up by setting this Tangsen's public at uh, Linux Foundation, okay. Um, the, the reason that uh, we also 
come up with all this story and then it works well. We already launched production, okay? With all this, what I said today here, it's already on production and you can visit our website, okay? Portal.nipa.cloud. And you can try it out and see how it goes, okay? We have a, a beautiful portal for you, for you to try it out. And uh, one thing about the reason, uh, we picked the hardware for the switch and router, we picked Juniper, is because um, Juniper allowed us, okay, to put the open source into their hardware, okay? They used to call it uh, Contrail. Okay, open control. But now they think they changed the name to C, something like that, I forgot. But uh, they allowed us to do that. So we felt that this is a good way, so at least someone guarantee their hardware, okay? Uh, I, could, I could go with the white box. But I said, well, you know, white box, you don't really guarantee with, with the hardware, so if you put open source on the white box, then it's a little bit too risky. So I, I said, well, let's go with Juniper. And uh, they already have experience with the Contrail. And, and basically, Contrail and Fabric, uh, Tungsten Fabric is pretty much the same. But it's the one you pay for the license. Okay. The other one you don't have to. But you've got to work hard on it, try to install that. But I think they, they did really help us a lot here. Okay. So it's our route base okay, between compute node. And uh, it's simple, like I said, uh, with other press platforms such like uh, Kubernetes, uh, and, and it's no vendor lock-in here. Um, the the support deployment with multi-option of data path, like kernel mo mode, uh, DPDK, uh, SRIOV, and SmartNIC. Okay, it, it's highly scalable with high performance. You have to try it out to believe it. It has a lot of rich feature here, and. Uh, these are some of the features that I think it's very interesting. It's uh, advanced ACL, okay? Um, you can, uh, in, in the uh, old, old, old days, I mean in the old uh, networking, uh, sometimes we cannot, I think uh, Neutron allow you to uh, deny it, but uh, it, it won't let you allow the port. Uh, uh, those kind of action that uh, we now can do both allow and deny. Um, the, um, that, that's the uh, service group, we can do service group. We can do um, uh, object, okay, uh, with, the, with the policy rules, okay, on that. And um, what else? Uh, we can do service change, okay. That, that's uh, transparent route and, and, and NAT here. Uh, it's uh, elastic, uh, resilient uh, VPN uh, with the load balancing, ECMP, eco uh, cost, multipath, uh, and it support integration with physical router, the DCI here. So you can plug in uh, right, right in to the uh, router and it support multi-cloud and multi ASAT. Okay, these are the uh, um, would think about it, and um, uh, okay. Here's the uh, overall tungsten uh, fabric architecture. Okay, and as you can see, this is the IP fabric underlay. So th these are the uh, architecture that we are using right now. And uh, you can, uh, in, in here, you can start off with, uh, let's say you want, uh, the first step you can do like 20, rack, uh, 20 server per rack. And you can do like uh, eight of them, I think. Yeah, you can do uh, eight rack and uh, the network behind it is like a hundred gig, okay? And it's a 24 gig time for. That's why we, we use it. For the uh, uh, overlay, it's all hundred gig, and maybe it's underlay 25 gig time for. Okay, okay. here's the uh, 
uh, multi ASAT architecture of OpenStack and Tangsen fabric here. All right, now, now we're getting into the uh, detail of this thing. Uh, the key of this one is that you need to have, uh, let's say, I call this one back off ASAT, and then this is not totally ASAT. So this is ASAT one, ASAT two. And the top part is the glow zone, right? As you can see that the glow zone, you can see how this can be in the neutron keystone horizon, grants, nova, and tinder. We're gonna talk, we're gonna talk to everyone of this, right? Okay. So to all this this uh, thing and then how it connects to them. Um, so and, and this is again the Jupiter uh, network. Uh, all this thing is what we or the global zone, okay, so centralized control for management. And it requires three sites, okay, for active. So uh, we need to have three sites to have this, to have a higher availability right here. Um, so the global site could be anywhere that you can put it, as long as it's not in these two, okay. Because if one side down, we don't want to have this two now. Okay. We want to have one down. We need one down, and these two can still work fine. That's, that's why you're going to have a two side. The edge zone, we call this one is the edge zone right here. The edge of flow, edge of flow. Okay, so you're going to have a controller computer storage, you know. All in this one, okay. You're going to have a, a control, a self storage computer. All in this. And, uh, High availability, so do no dependency for each ASAP. Okay. Uh, multi ASAP for, for open stack services. So in each one, you have uh, NOVA, volume, grants, and network, which is the neutron constant traffic. Uh, you, you, you still see that uh, we use neutron, but actually, uh, neutron, we don't really. Uh, uh, use much, but we need to have it because OpenStack and Safe Storage talk to Neutron. So we, we use Neutron almost like a proxy, okay, a pass to, to uh, tungsten fabric. But you need to use it still, okay? All right. Then let's look at this uh, Nova cell first. And for Nova Cell, uh, we we gonna install this one uh, so that we can separate Rapid MQ to uh, support Compute Node in each ASAT. Okay. All right. You can see that this Nova Cell here with the Nova conductors. Okay. And uh, to go to Nova Compute. So you can see that each rapid is Q separate now. Okay. So the load is become less to begin with. And uh, secondly, uh, rapid Q doesn't overload on the server because it, it all go to constant traffic. And as you can see later on that all constant traffic run on So uh, we create something that is uh, make a networking easier, simple, and uh, still integrate nicely with the OpenStack here. So, uh, so we deploy these Nova connector and RabbitMQ for each ASAT and then local RabbitMQ for scale compute node, okay? Because if you have for each side, it, will, uh, it can scale easier. Horizon API CLI are able to choose each ASAP uh, on its standard to create it. Okay. So you, you can uh, use all these things here if, if you, you prefer to go with that. Uh, next one is the uh, Cinder. Okay. Uh, we deploy Cinder volume. Cinder, is, as we now know, is to talk about the volume with the SEP storage here. Yeah? And uh, Cinder volume is responsible to manage local SEP cluster. Okay, and we use volume instead of local disk. In the old public cloud, we have a local disk within the compute node. 
right? So when you pick flavor, <coughs> you, I have to tell, you have to pick like uh, two core, four gigs, and 80 gig of uh, storage. But the new one, uh, uh, you can specify anything you want because we use the volume instead. So you have a two core, four gig, and then you can pick like size 20, it's up to you, and then you attach to it. And this makes life easier because if that VM goes down, you can just you know, replace the VM with the CPU and RAM and then attach back to the volume. And, and so there's no low for this. And make it easier for us to expand the volume itself. Okay, so we also do volume snapshot okay, on site backup. Uh, when we, when we did this, uh, there's a link here between the two here. Okay. And we try to minimize the, the link, not to use it too much. Okay. We want to make sure that if you're on one, one site, one AZ, then you can, you, you make sure you do everything in that one. Okay. Uh, so that you can save the link. But if you want to go across AZ, then there's some cost. But if you don't really need it, uh, okay, you want to save backup, you can do uh, within outside, but uh, you can also upload the image to, or to replicate it by using the radar scan okay. If you want to go across the site, we decide that you have to do it to the image. That, that, that's a thing that uh, we, uh, that's going to have to go to GAN. Okay, we're going to talk about it uh, next year. And, uh, but that's, that's the way we designed it. We want to save you costs, and you, you don't really need it, then you don't send across the ASAP. Okay. Then you look at grants here. Using, using separate dot gateway as a start back in uh, with the slim API here, and uh, more design repli replication of grant dot gateway. You see that side of grants coming through and then talking this. One thing that we decide uh, is called Cinder Image Cache. It's just some, something that we want to save the bandwidth. It's a new feature to speed up volume created by cache image that have been used on that ASAP before. For example, like uh, you, you download image right, from, from the, uh, the system one we have downloaded. If it's on this side already, next time, the second user come in and download it, they, they will use the cache to put it in. Instead of downloading from this, it's that one. Okay. So that, that's the thing that we designed to help save the bandwidth for, for anyone who really uh, need to use, uh, uh, design the cluster that will have a least traffic going between the two. Yeah. Okay. So, so GAN is also very important here with the uh, Cinder volume. And uh, the last one here is about the uh, tungsten fabric, which is the networking here. So Neutron, like I said before, uh, with the tungsten fabric service plugin, okay, uh, which proxy API request to a traffic controller, uh, to the tungsten fabric controller. This one, like I mentioned earlier, we need to download uh, Okay, to every node, to every uh, uh, node that you need to put the neutron agent in the, in, in, into that one. So we deploy the TF tungsten fabric router instead of neutron agent. And uh, tungsten fabric router connect to tungsten config node via SMPP. As you can see this one, this is a, a controller right here, and it's coming to here, but uh, See this screen line here as well. This tool is going to help uh, us take care of the network with the uh, router of this network. And uh, with all these neutron, uh, it, it really makes uh, life easier for us in terms of operating this. Uh, so TF controller node is able to peer with BGP to the external router, okay? Such as Juniper, we use the MX router here to exchange the route our BGP, and it's really uh, very nice. Um, and 
my last slide here. Uh, this is a network diagram. Okay. So let's say if you want to build your virtual network uh, on on uh, this this side here, you can call that zero one. But within this one, you have a VM one, VM two. Okay. So if you do that, then you can look at the purple one. These two will connect to each other. You can talk to each other using this east west overlay. But uh, if you chose not to talk to one another, another you can show, go with the virtual network zero two. This this one won't be able to talk to on this side. So uh, the other thing about this uh, configuration of this uh, architecture is that each side, okay, again we designed it to make sure that you can go out to the internet, okay, via external network and OISP. Every both side has it, but if you have to go through this one and go out here, it's going to cost you because this is the uh, NTRS link, and you have some higher cost if you have to go through uh, the two. You want to get to the internet, so this this is the thing that we decide uh, to make it simple and easy. But we can use that too. I mean, this is a data line. You can you can use it anytime you want if you're willing to bear the cost of this one. Okay. So this is a network diagram that we have, and uh, that's pretty much how we designed it. And uh, if you have any question, I think we can uh, uh, answer you that. Okay. All right, uh, uh, Jackie, uh, you want to use the microphone? Here? Happen to global zone is die, uh, die now just just itself right okay uh, take top there okay let me how good uh huh oh okay uh, let, let me show you this one here I forgot to mention that uh, the global zone is not actually in all three. It's all already in all three. Not, not just one. Okay. So just, just to clarify, you're saying that your, your control plane is replicated in all of your zones? Yeah, the, the global replicate. Yeah, I have, I have a question about your network architecture. Like, uh, actually, you're using the uh, tungsten for the provide network for your cloud, right? Uh, so you can uh, serve the S3 model or problem very efficiently. But I'm thinking, but I'm asking about you, uh, how are you dealing with the uh, L4 IP table system? Like, or you can block, or you can, you should taking dealing with the IP tables with the neutron S3 agent or something. But yeah, I'm, I'm just, just I'm curious, how can you dealing with the IP tables with this model? IP tables? Yeah, yeah, for that. Model, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, let me ask uh, my, my staff, uh, take up uh, how we, how we uh, handle IP table. I mean, for the, uh, you, if you pro provide the air for, for for your tenant network, for the, for the tenant? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how can you deal with that? Right, right. How, how you handle that? Forget about the IP tables. I mean, yeah. 
I should mention about the airport road balance. Okay. Maybe, yeah, we we'll talk, talk about it later. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there, there's a security code, the old way, you can, you can right. do the same way, right? Right. With, with the old way. Yeah. There's a new way, the second choice, which is what? Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, because I have a very very similar impl implementation with this architecture, but I'm not using uh, the tungsten fabric. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, so I'm really wondering about that, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but I'm, yeah, we, we discuss it later. Thank you. My question is how do you handle, you know, uh, updates on the uh, switches from Uniper concerning the operating system when you are using the open source version from Contrail, which is tungsten. I mean, the switch OS will have updates, yeah, and then you have to reflect that in your tungsten fabric manager as well. I know, I, I think this setup is quite a bit impressive. So that's the only way how you can combine overlay networking with switches and Linux system because you are using the vRouter from Uniper on the Linux system. Uh, but, you know, when, when you're using the open source version, you know, are you then maintaining this version, you know, when the switch operating system is being updated and you have to react because otherwise it doesn't work anymore? Uh, uh, the uh, uh, last to make some updates. Uh, I don't know the main word for me to run. Of course, uh, they, they, they come on. Okay. Okay, the third one, we update. Oh, okay, it's not the same topic. Mm -hmm. Let's start the 